But now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. This week on Muskogee Vision, we have the unofficial 2019 Muskogee Creek Nation general election results. Ryle Schools held its annual Christmas party with the Home Builders Association and Santa Claus. And from the vault comes Alexander Posey, his words, his land. And thanks for watching Muskogee Vision. These are your 2019 unofficial general election results. If there is no challenge filed during the challenge period, these results will become official on Friday, December 20th, 2019. David Hill is our new principal chief, winning with a landslide victory of 3,399 votes, or 65.64% of the vote, over Bim Steve Bruner with 1,779 votes, or 34.36% of the vote. Creek District Seat A was won by Joseph Hicks with 2,520 votes, or 51.54% of the vote, over Dean Hughes with 2,369 votes, or 48.46% of the vote. Muskogee District Seat A saw a narrow victory for Mary Crawford with 2,454 votes, or 50.53% of the vote, over Laura Harjo King with 2,403 votes, or 49.47% of the vote. Oatmulgee District also saw a close race result in a victory for William Lowe, with 2,504 votes, or 50.87% of the vote, over Carmen Tecumseh Williams, with 2,418 votes, or 49.13% of the vote. Tuckabutchee Seat A was won by Anna Marshall, with 2,846 votes, or 58.48% of the vote, over Rufus Scott, with 2,021 votes, or 41.52% of the vote. Wagner C. Day saw a victory for Charles McHenry, with 2,590 votes, or 52.95% of the vote, over Deidre Soap, with 2,301 votes, or 47.05% of the vote. Stay tuned to Muskogee Vision for all your election and tribal government updates. I have been a member of the Home Builders Association for over 30 years. And then over that 30 years, I've dealt with Ryle every year for over 30 years. They always, every year, give so much. You know, this is an event that has gone on for year to year to year. We have never failed or lost a single year. Even back in the many, many years ago when we weren't as well as we are now able to have the fundraising that we have to do this event, we used to have to all contribute and, and go around and take funds up and stuff to do it. But we've always done it. It's always been a event to get our Christmas kicked off as well as getting these kids Christmas kicked off. 
The kids every year make an ornament. Some of them have their pictures on them, different things. I have so many ornaments from over the years from my wife and I doing this mm -hmm. that I decorate an entire Christmas tree with nothing but the Ryle kids' ornaments. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty amazing. Got a bunch of them. Well, you know, they would call us and uh, uh, they would tell us, you know, what days we we were going there and and. Uh, um, and at the beginning it was, um, let's see, Creekmore. Uh, he would uh, come down and, and visit with us and, and uh, visit with me and the teachers and, and tell us what it was all about and, and things like that. And, and uh, he would kind of give us a schedule of what, what to expect. And uh, so then uh, we'd just go up there and meet him at the Walmart or wherever, you know, they wanted to meet. So. Uh, it was a good experience. It taught them to uh, not be selfish. You know, they uh, they bought for their families, and uh, uh, it it was just a, it was just a real experience for them. They they they, they kind of looked forward to it every year, and uh, and that was one day that we never had anybody ever miss. <laughs> you know. I just remember us going every year, you know, getting it so excited, you know, the night before you couldn't sleep or anything because you knew you were going to get to go shop and go to Tulsa, you know, that was a big thing because a lot of us didn't go to Tulsa all the time. And um, just uh, being able to spend money, I know that at that time they would, we would go shopping and then uh, go to Shotgun Sam's, which that used to be a big pizza place back then, and go and eat there, eat pizza and stuff and get, you know, get presents. I know one year they gave us everybody a bike and it was personalized, had our money, had our name on there and everything. The girls got pink and white ones and the guys got black bikes. But um, yeah, I remember that. Um, just going on that trip every year, it was, you know, definitely everybody loved going there and, you know, you ever, nobody missed that trip and it was uh, quite memorable for me. But I remember going and going to like, um, in the store and like with my teacher and going around and we had our own shopping cart and like we got to pick our own toys and it was just like a different experience when I think back and I remember during that time it was when Pocahontas was big as well so I remember getting this Pocahontas coloring book and crowns and so that's what I remember from Home Builders. Growing up uh, in that area a lot of uh, families from, from my part uh, my mother and father didn't graduate from high school. So yeah, a lot of them that were, were that way. And uh, so the jobs that they had were very uh, hard working, you know, manual labor type of jobs. So they always had to sacrifice. And they would sacrifice for us. Uh, as we got older, we understood. We understood what they was doing and uh, the things they would uh, have to do for us to have a Christmas if we was going to have one. So as we got older, Understanding that, that concept and understanding what they was doing for us was just huge, you know, and being able to to come home and say, hey, look what I got you, you know, and uh, not, didn't worry about wrapping up the president or anything, but just bringing it home and understanding at that time what it means to give and uh, to put a smile on someone's face or let them know that someone's thinking about them. It was like that, you know, like we never had pizza before or anything like that, you know, and it, you got up there and it was like, it was just so special. It just like everything was that much better. All the kids were together. You're, you were there with your school friends and everything like that. And it was just, yeah, everything just felt like it was a lot better. Well, when I think about home builders, uh, first thing that comes to my mind is just joy, uh, happiness, uh, feeling special. During that time, you have this, uh, at this time we seen this, it was like a, a big company that would come down to a little Ryle. It would pick us up, uh, uh, take us to, well actually we ride a bus, but they would, you know, when we was there, they would take care of everything that, uh, would, uh, take care of the whole bill as far as uh, the food and, and, and the presents. And um, I always tell a story to my friends that, uh, one of my fondest memories is uh, getting there and uh, there's a big stage 
Of course, being kids, we, we, we didn't really pay attention to those types of things. We'd get there because we were always going to eat pizza. <laughs> we were always going to have some, some pop, just some things that we didn't hardly get. Uh, and then also uh, some bags of goodies that they had for us every year. And we'd get there, and then the, halfway through the program, they said, okay, they, they take away all these tarps, and there's a bike. I tell the bikes there. And then find your bike, it's got your name on it. And it was just so awesome. And we get back to Raleigh, his big truck, and all the uh, all the bikes are in there. And uh, see all the kids <laughs> go on the pink and white bikes for the girls and silver black for the boys, you know. And then they buy all of our uh, athletic gear for the year. Uh, cleats, uh, gloves, uh, footballs, basketballs. But for someone to take time out uh, for us, for a lot of us, that was only only Christmas. I also tell a story that, and a lot a lot of us did. We would we were so excited, you know, we take a shower that night, go to bed, but we put the clothes on that we were gonna wear the next day. No one missed school, and everyone was there early, you know. And it was just, it was just a great, great day for us. And every time I hear someone mention that, it puts a smile on my face, and and then watch it on TV. I can just see it to those kids' eyes. And one thing that really touched my heart later, as it went on, a lot of these kids, you would see them buying things for adults. And uh, the people that were with them was asking, well, why are you getting this, why are you getting that? Well, it's for my mom, or it's for my dad, or it's for my brother, for my sister. And they already had that, 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 that concept, to me, which is the right concept at this time, is giving. Not necessarily receiving, but giving and then give back to their families. And... There's a lot of poverty in that area and some people wouldn't be able to afford Christmases. And you know, some kids, you know, they shop for their, for their families instead of, you know, spending the whole money on themselves. I think that really um, helped people, um, especially the kids there, to show that, you know, somebody is being generous to them. So, you know, I want to uh, pay it forward to my own family because, you know, a lot of kids didn't have Christmas on their own, and it, I think it definitely helped with them being able to celebrate a little bit of Christmas, no matter how small it was for them. You learn generosity more when you actually see somebody who's given their time, effort, and you know, money to these kids, and I think that's helped me to develop um, more sense of how how it affects the communities. How you know, some kids are in poverty level and may not have anything or anything like that, and it's just made me realize more that um, how much I'm fortunate enough to be where I am versus you know other families in that area. The things that I do now, uh, me and my friends was able to start a nonprofit organization, and now I'm a part of a, a part of a, a ministry that would do. And because of what they did, because of how they made me feel, how they made me feel special, and not looking at. Uh, me as far as the things maybe I've done or things I've been through, but just seeing to say, hey, this is just individual, and I'm just going to do whatever I can to, so they can have a good day. Do whatever I can, to, again, to put a smile on their face, to make them feel special, make them feel significant. And the things I do now, that's what I love doing. I love to give. And, you know, we put on uh, a lot of basketball tournaments, and one thing we do is a hospitality room. We feed people sit down and be able to talk to them. And, uh, you just be amazed that anything, to us, it's, it's just a small thing, but to them it's very big that someone would think about it. So it's really, really influenced my life. And that's something that I teach my kids and people that I'm associated with. You know, If you can give, that's what you need to do. And, 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 and now the good Lord has allowed me to be a, a pastor of a church. And one thing I always say is fulfill a need. Everyone always has a need in their life. It could be clothing, it could be food, it could be maybe helping them out with the bill or, or just buying them lunch, well, it, no matter what it is. But uh, that spirit of giving, uh, it's something that uh, I wouldn't say is, is gone away, but nowadays it seems very uncommon. You know, and I want them to be able to, uh, to do those types of things. Because again, you just never know doing one little thing what it can do for a person. Uh, especially for their their attitude or maybe something going through that day. It really, it, to me, it really helps. Merry Christmas.
Christmas to you guys. Thank you. I, I tell you, if you, if we had a, a, a room full of uh, Ryle alum, uh, that could be 10, 15, 20 years apart in the years that they attended. But if you said that one thing, if you said, if you said home builders, all their, again, their faces would light up and they would all have a special uh, memory, something that happened in the, uh, how uh, this type of year, every time, or this time of year when it comes around, those thoughts uh, uh, and those memories and then uh, telling our kids again how, how uh, blessed they are to be able to have that. You don't see that very often, you know. Uh, there was five of us in my family that, that attended Ryle, and um, it was awesome. We all got to go. <laughs> we all got to go at the same time, and we'd all come back with, with gifts and things. And it was, it, it, and the one thing that I realized now that I didn't realize back then, it took a lot of stress off my mom and dad because they knew now that we had something for 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 Christmas, and we was like, yes, we got this for Christmas. So you know. There were some of our uh, friends that uh, their parents uh, were making pretty good money. So there was, there was a couple of here and there that was going to have a real good, real good Christmas. But that day, we were all equal, if you know what I mean. That day, we were all equal. We were all treated the same. And we all had the same, uh, again, that joy and happiness coming from this, this one particular event. And that was just awesome. Again, because that day... No one was mad at each other. <laughs> no one was arguing. It was just, hey, we're getting ready to go to Home Builders, jumping on that bus and just, uh, you know, going to Tulsa. And, and to us, Tulsa seemed like, uh, you know, it was like a, a long ways away. And it was like, it was just, wow. To me, I thought, that, wow, that was the whole world when I was younger. You know, there's nothing bigger than Tulsa, <laughs> you know. During this time, it's a special time just to be able to give even though you may you may not have a lot in your pocket, and there's there's some way to give. It could be just again going by checking on somebody. It could be uh, maybe someone uh, still back <laughs> in our area. They still use wood stoves. Hey, go buy them a, a rick of wood. I don't know something. You'd be amazed. One little thing we would do during this time, and, and because and the one thing I encourage you to do that is because our kids watch us. Our kids watch what we do. And that's a good thing to pass on, generosity and caring about other people. Uh, and not only to do it during this time, but through the whole year. It doesn't have to be just Christmas to be able to have the heart to give. Uh, do, it to, you know, do it the whole year and see what happens. It changes a lot of atmospheres. It changes a lot of people's mentality. So that's, that's the one thing I, I would pass on. And, and to thank them, the Home Builders Association and the family of uh, Mr. Creek Board, because they gave me a lot of good memories and helped me to develop a, a heart that I have now. Um, yes, I would also like to thank Home Builders for continuing this um, tradition for our raw students. You know, it, yes, it has made a lasting impact on me and our my kids, my family, other family members who have attended RAL, and you know, I just really appreciate the generosity they've shown to our students. Thank you, Home Builders, for writing that uh, memorable experience. Um, I think it was like either in 95, 96 that I experienced that, and I still remember it to this day, like over 20 years later. And um, just a shout out, yeah, to Mr. Hicks. He was um, the superintendent or principal when I was there. And then um, I remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. Jamie Smith, and she's made a lasting impact on me.
Alexander Lawrence Posey, known as Alex to his friends and readers, was one of the most renowned figures to ever emerge from the ranks of the Muscogee Creek Nation. This gentle, good-natured man was educator, journalist, philosopher, humorist, statesman, and active participant in the affairs of his time. Born in the Creek Nation near Eufaula in 1873, Alex Posey lived in an era which witnessed the death of Indian nations and the birth of the state of Oklahoma. His father was of Scotch, Irish, and Creek descent, and his mother was full-blood Creek. The Muskogee tongue was Alex's first language, though his father made sure that English was later mastered in school. In 1890, when Alex was 17, he entered Bacone College, then known as Indian University near Muskogee. It was there that his literary and journalistic talents began to flower. After graduation in 1895, Posey began his short but illustrious career. He was elected to the House of Warriors, a branch of the Creek Legislature, and then was named Superintendent of the Creek Orphanage at Okmulgee. There he met and married Minnie Harris of Fayetteville, Arkansas, one of the teachers. In 1897, Alex and his wife moved to a farm near Stidham, not far from his birthplace. Here he roamed the Tulladega, a range of hills that bordered the Oktahutchee, the Sandy River, studied nature, and wrote poetry. That same year, he was called to serve as the superintendent of the Creek Nation High School in Eufaula. His poetry and prose began appearing regularly in the Indian Journal, Eufaula's newspaper, and in 1900, he became editor of that paper. As editor, Alex began writing the humorous and satirical column known as the Fuss Fixico Letters. These imaginative letters focused attention on the fraud and injustice being done to the Indians in the territory and were reprinted in newspapers all across the United States. In 1904, Posey went to work for the Dolls Commission, headquartered in Muskogee, to assist in its efforts to finish the allotment process among the Creeks. Posey spent three years as a field worker and interpreter locating lost and reluctant Creek Indians and helping to ensure that they got their fair share of allotted lands, the only remnant of a once powerful Indian nation. By 1907, Posey's work with the Dolls Commission was finished. Tribal lands had been dissolved, the new state had formed, and a sad sense of change hung in the air for Oklahoma's Indians. Alex had decided to return to Eufaula and take up ownership of the Indian Journal. But this was not to be. In May 1908, Alex Posey drowned while attempting to cross the rain-swollen waters of the North Canadian River in a boat. The boat capsized, throwing him into the swirling waters. Posey could only grasp at branches that hung out over the water's edge while rescue workers tried to save him. Eventually, the waters swept him away, and he was lost. But he left a legacy of imaginative words describing the natural world around him and his feelings about that world. Listen now to his poetry, his words, and see images of the land that inspired them. In Toledega, where mountains lift their heads to clouds that nestle low, where constant beauty spreads sublimer scenes below, where gray and massive rocks o'erhang rough heights sublime, where awful grandeur mocks the brush and poet rhyme. We saw the evening blush above the rugged range. We heard the river rush far off and faint and strange. Brook Song. If you'll but pause and listen, listen long, there are far off voices in a wee brook song that come as voices, come from out the years, and you will dream you hear the voice once hers, perhaps, and when dawn, blinded by your tears. To a robin, out in the golden air, out where the skies are fair, I hear a song of gladness with never note of sadness. Sing out thy heart's delight and mine of every sorrow. Sing, sweet bird, till the night and come again tomorrow. Flowers. When flowers fade, 
Why does their fragrance linger still? Have they a spirit too that death can never kill? Is it their judgment day when from the dark, dark mold of April and of May their blooms again unfold? The deer from out the folded hills that lie beneath a thin blue veil there comes a deer to drink from Limbo's waters in the dale then flies he back into the hills and sitting there I dream and watch as vain as he my image lying in the stream my hermitage between me and the noise of strife are walls of mountains set with pine the dusty, care-strewn paths of life lead not to this retreat of mine. I hear the morning wind awake beyond the purple height, and in the growing light the lap of lilies on the lake. I live with echo and with song, and beauty leads me forth to see her temple's colonnades, and long together do we love to be. The mountains wall me in, complete, and leave me but a bit of blue above. All year the days are sweet, how sweet, and all the long nights through. I hear the river flowing by along its sandy bars. Behold, far in the midnight sky, an infinity of stars. Tis sweet when all is still, when darkness gathers round to hear from hill to hill the far, the wondering sound. The cedar and the pine have pitched their tents with me, what freedom vast is mine, what room, what mystery. Upon the dreamy southern breeze that steals in like a laden bee and sighs for rest among the trees are far-blown bits of melody. Autumn. In the dreamy silence of the afternoon, a cloth of gold is woven over wood and prairie, and the jaybird, newly fallen from the heaven, scatters cordial greetings and the air is filled with scarlet leaves that, dropping, rise again as ever with a useless sigh for rest, and it is autumn. Sunset By coward clouds forgot, by yonder sunset flow, the day, in battle shot, lies bleeding, weak and low. My fancy why do trees along the river lean so far out o'er the tide? Very wise men tell me why, but I am never satisfied. And so I keep my fancy still, that trees lean out to save the drowning from the clutches of the cold, remorseless wave.